All right, my brothers, sisters, and friends, let's truly thank and praise the Lord for blessing us to come back to you once again. Truly, God is good and His mercy is everlasting. We're coming back again with video number 4B. And we are talking about confusion in the church tonight, a measure of the Spirit. All right? A measure of the Spirit. Let's take our Bibles tonight and turn to the book of Romans chapter 10. Back to Romans chapter 10, beginning at verse 13. Let's take our Bibles and go to Romans chapter 10, beginning at verse 13. We're going to pick up there. <clears throat> All right, Romans chapter 10, beginning at verse uh, 13. It says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All right, so if we want to be saved, we must call upon the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord, Jesus, is what saves us. There is none other name given among men whereby we must be saved. So we are saved by the shedding of the blood of Jesus, not by water baptism or any other means, but by the agent of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. All right, now look at verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? So you got to believe in Jesus in order to be saved. How are you going to call upon him and you don't even believe on him? All right. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How can they believe on him of whom they have not heard? How are you going to believe in Jesus when you have not heard about Jesus? That's the question. All right, look at the other part. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Well, if you got water baptism in Jesus' name, Maybe you don't, you don't need to hear. People say all you need is water baptism in Jesus' name. They say you got to have water baptism in Jesus' name to be saved. They, they're not saying that you have to have, uh, you have to hear the word to be saved. They say you got to be saved by, they said it is water baptism that saves you. Not hearing the preacher, not hearing the word. They have gone to, uh, Another means of salvation, water baptism in Jesus' name. But he said, how should they hear without a preacher? Well, what you need a preacher for? If water baptism saves you, what you need a preacher for? Just get somebody to baptize you in water and you say, right? Well, that ain't what the Bible is saying. You need a preacher because you need to preach the word so that they can hear the word and be saved by the word. Glory to God. So that's what we're telling you. It is the agent of the word and the spirit that saves you. And not water baptism in Jesus' name. Just because you attach Jesus' name to water baptism does not mean you're going to be saved. Glory to God. You got to have the Holy Spirit putting you into the body of Christ, using the blood of Jesus to cleanse you. That's how you get saved. It's got to happen from heaven upon you here in the earth. Not here in the earth. It being performed here in the earth that's causing your salvation. No, salvation comes from up there. It doesn't come from down here. All right, look at verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? How can they preach except they be sent? They got to be sent. By God, with the word, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. See, we're talking about preaching the gospel of peace. We're talking about the gospel. You want to be saved, you must hear the gospel. The gospel of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. You must be resurrected. Glory to God. And you don't get resurrected by being water baptized. 
you get resurrected by being spirit baptized. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so he said, how beautiful are the, are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Verse 16, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. They have not all obeyed the gospel. See, there are many of you all have not obeyed the gospel. You're trying to go another route to get the gospel. You're trying to go through the route of water baptism, and you want to throw Jesus' name on top of it and, and, and come up with it and say, well, that's how we're saved. No, that's another way. That's another gospel. That's apostolic gospel. That's not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's not biblical gospel. Glory be to God. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Elias saith, Lord, or Esaias saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? Or Isaiah says, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So in order to get faith, you must hear. And in order to have hearing, it must be by the word of God. The word of God. The word of God, not water baptism. Glory be to God. All right, now let's take our Bibles. And um, did, we go, we, did we go down to verse 17? That should be Romans chapter 13 through 17. Yes. All right, now let's go to uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Let's go. Let's back up to stay in that same chapter and go to verse 9. Verse 9, all right? That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. All right? So you must confess with your mouth, number one, you must believe in your heart, number two, that God raised Jesus from the dead, and then you shall be saved. You shall be saved under those two conditions. Not water baptism is not included in there. All right? Water baptism is on down the road, but you must confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, and thou shall be saved. Now somebody say, say it shall be is later on after you've done other things. No, shall be is, is in the second person present. All right, present tense. Second person present tense. All right, it's now. Once you do that, it is now. It happens then it don't happen on down on the road, on down the road. No, that's second person present tense. Glory to God. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So the scripture here is telling you how you get salvation. You believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth and you get salvation. Glory to God. Just like the gospel is the power unto salvation. The gospel brings you unto salvation. Believing and confession brings you unto salvation. In other words, you get salvation. It comes alive in you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right? For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. All right, now let's go to um, Romans chapter 6. Let's back up to Romans chapter 6. We're moving right along on our way to the measure of the Spirit. We're going to get there. All right, let's go to Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. We hope you're turning with us in your Bibles. Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. All right, here we go. Verse 1, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So the question is asked, shall we continue in sin? 
Shall we continue to practice sin? Shall we continue to live in sin? Now that we have received this grace, now that we have been saved by uh, belief and confession, no. He says in verse 2, God forbid us. How shall we that are dead to sin? See, we used to be dead in sin. Now that we have been born again through the grace of God, now we are dead to sin. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We are dead to sin. Hallelujah. And so we that are dead to sin, how shall we live uh, any longer therein? Glory to God. Hallelujah. We don't live in sin any longer. Why? Because we're dead to sin. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Sin does not have dominion over us anymore because we have been born again and we have the Spirit of God placed on inside of us to give us victory and power over sin. So we have a degree of power because we have the measure of the Spirit on the inside of us. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now, we don't have power to become an effective witness, but we have power over sin. All right? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Because we have the Holy Spirit uh, in, in us. We have a measure of the Spirit in us. So we are dead to sin now. The reason why uh, a person cannot live uh, over sin or reign over sin is because they don't have the Holy Spirit giving them power and victory over sin. See, this is how you can tell a person is not saved because they are still in their flesh, in their lust, practicing sin. And the reason why that is because they don't have the Holy Spirit to give them victory over sin. The only way you can have victory over sin and be dead to sin, you got to be born again and given that measure of spirit in your life. Glory to God. By the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. That's why you're still a thief. You're still a liar. You're still a homosexual. You're still a lesbian. You have no victory over it because you haven't been born again because you don't have that, that uh, down payment measure in your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You have no victory over sin. Why? Because you don't have the Holy Spirit in you to give you power over sin. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Look what he said in verse 3. He said, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Now you were baptized into Jesus Christ. It's not saying here that you were baptized in the water. Look at that again. Because see, these apostolics like uh, Elder Murray will run over here to verse to chapter 6 and try to, try to put baptism in Jesus' name on you. This is not talking about baptism in Jesus' name in water. This is talking about baptized into Jesus Christ. He said, know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ. What does it mean by we were baptized into Jesus Christ? We were baptized into Jesus Christ and into his body by the Holy Spirit. We were buried with him. We were born again. We were recreated. We were made new creatures in him. This has nothing to do with water baptism in his name. This is talking about being buried with him. Going down in that watery grave. And coming up and walking in the newness of life. This is talking about where you get this, this uh, down payment measure. After you've had this experience, you've been born again from above. You've been born anew. You've been transformed. You've been renewed. You've been recreated. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So he said, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, not baptized into water, but baptized into Jesus Christ, into the body of Christ, into the church, into the ark of safety. Glory to God. Were baptized into his death. Glory to God. Look at verse 4. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism. Not by water baptism, but by spirit baptism. See, any, any baptism is a barrier. See, you can be you can be buried, you can be buried more than just by water. 
You can be buried by the Spirit. See? Every baptism is a barrier. You go down. You're buried. Glory to God. So we're talking about a spiritual baptism here. This is not a water baptism here in Jesus' name. Or this is not even talking about water baptism in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. This is talking about a spiritual death, a spiritual baptism. Now you can run over here and use this as an example of water baptism. In other words, you can compare this water baptism, you can compare this to water baptism or, com or compare water baptism to this. That's really what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be comparing water baptism to this spirit baptism because the spirit baptism is superior to water baptism. In other words, spiritual baptism is from heaven. Water baptism is from earth. It is a type and a shadow of what is in the heaven and what we experience when we get in Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We live by spirit baptism, not by water baptism. Glory to God. So he said, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. So we are walking the newness of life and not the oldness of the letter or the law or the flesh because we have now been born from above, born from heaven. We got some help now. That's how we can live free from sin. Folk fussing and arguing today talking about nobody can live free from sin. I don't care what you say. I'm, I'm, I care what the word said. The word said I've been made free from sin. The word said I am no longer a slave to sin. I don't practice sin. I don't live like I used to. You won't find me doing the works of the flesh. When the devil brings me that mess, I laugh at him. Or I tell him, get behind me. Get out of my mind. Because see, the battle is fought in the mind. Get out of my mind, Satan. You have no victory over me. I'm not going to do that mess. I did that when I was in the world before I met Jesus. I'm not interested in anything you have to offer me. I know who you are. You can't fool me. You're not of God. God wouldn't, wouldn't bring any evil thoughts to me. God wouldn't tempt me with evil. It's you, Satan, and I don't want to have anything to do with you. So you get behind me. You have no authority over me. Can't anybody make me do anything. Talking about you almost made me cuss. You can't almost make me do anything. I've had people that come up to me and try to show off in the front of other folk. Talking about, watch me make him do this here. That stuff don't work on me. Why? Because I'm under the control of the Holy Ghost. And as I yield to the Holy Ghost, I have victory over the flesh and victory over, over uh, uh, the things of the world. Talking about you almost made me cuss. You, you made me mad. Can't anybody make you mad unless you allow yourself to be made mad. Can't anybody, and sometimes it's good to get mad. I get mad sometimes. It's called righteous indignation. When I see people doing evil stuff and evil things and getting by with it because they're not getting away they're only getting by for a while their sin is going to find them out they're going to close their eyes at the while and it's going to be sad so sad because nobody is getting away with anything that's why i don't understand how these folk who call themselves christians can can mistreat folk and talk about folks and run over folk and do everything that they think they're big enough to do and still call themselves Christians and act just like they're going to they gonna get away with it. You're not going to get away with it. It's just a matter of time. Every dog has a day. Every tub has to sit on its own bottom. Nobody is going to get away with anything. And if you were smart and knew God and loved God, you would always keep in mind, keep in memory that there's, there is God who is watching you. He's not blind. There is God who is hearing you. He's not deaf. He doesn't have Alzheimer. He's not going to forget anything you've done. He is a good record keeper. He doesn't make any mistakes. Glory to God. That's why it doesn't bother me what people say about me and the things that people do to me. They're not going to get away with it. They only get it by. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm not going to act a fool because you're acting a fool. I don't have to act up because you act up. 
I can keep my body under subjection. Apostle Paul said he kept his body under subjection. We find these folk always running over there trying to talk about, well, Apostle Paul, he was a sinner. He wasn't a holy man. He sinned too. Apostle Paul was a holy man. He didn't practice sin. He, he lived a clean and a holy life. He said, he told you that in him, in his, he said in his flesh dwelleth no good thing. He didn't say in him dwelleth no good thing. Your flesh and you are two different things. He said in his flesh dwelleth no good thing. But he said he kept his body under subjection lest when he preached to others he wouldn't be a castaway. See, I can't, I can't preach to you how to live right and you turn around looking at me and I'm not living right. I can't preach to you about righteousness and holiness if I can't live righteousness and holiness. I mean, I could. I could preach to you, but I wouldn't be justifiable. I can't judge you and do the same thing. That's what the Bible teaches. It's all right to judge, but make sure you don't have that in your life what you condemning somebody else with. See, make sure your eye is single. Make sure you're living a clean and a holy life. Don't worry about these folk that are always talking about, well, you think you're so holy. You think you're so righteous. People tell me that all the time. On my jobs, people would tell me that all the time because I didn't act like them and cuss like them and, and keep up messing junk like they did and isolated myself. A lot of time I'd sit alone by myself. Not that I thought I was better than them. Of course, I am better than them. Anything God has, all of God's children are better than the devil's children. Somebody said, well, you think you're better than us. Well, I am. I'm a child of God and you're a child of the devil, so I'm better than you. Everything God has is better than what the devil has. All right? So I am better than you. That's why I don't live like you. That's why you can look at me and look at you and you can get mad and upset with me and I haven't done anything with you. But my life rebukes your life. My life condemns you. See, you don't like me because I don't live like you and act like you. Therefore, that's why you don't like me. I used to have folk all the time to tell me, you think you're so righteous, you're so holy. I never said that. I never told you that. How did you come to that conclusion? You never heard me say that. No, because I don't live like you and act like you and talk like you. And you can look at me and see a difference between me and you because I'm light and you darkness. Well, you don't have to be darkness. You can be light too. You just give your life to God. It's like some folk always, you know, they, they, they act like, uh, you, you know, they, they can be just like you. All right? They, you're like Christ. They could be like Christ too. Now, there's no need in you getting upset with me because my house is pretty and white. Well, just just paint your get paint your house. Allow Jesus to come into you and make your your house pretty and white. You don't have to get angry and upset and jealous over my house. Just allow Jesus to do on your house what He did on my house. Glory to God, Hallelujah! Salvation has been extended to all. Jesus died for everybody. This lie that people get on the internet over to YouTube talking about he only died for a select few. That's a lie. He died for all, but all would not receive him. It's a whosoever will. He didn't die for everybody that, you know, for only those that, that are going to be saved. No, he died for the whole world, but the whole world doesn't want Jesus. The whole world does not want Christ. The whole world does not want righteousness. The whole world does not want holiness. So therefore, he's going to give salvation to those that wants him. It's a whosoever will. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So he said, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into his death, as like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so, we also shall walk in the newness of life. Verse 5, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, See, we've been planted in together, together in the likeness of his death. See, we've, we've, we've been born again. We have, been, we have died and been buried just like Christ died and was buried. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so now we shall also uh, be in the likeness of his what? Resurrection. 
we shall rise up in the newness of life, in the likeness of his resurrection. We're going to come forth and come up and begin to walk in the newness of life, in righteousness and true holiness. We're going to deny the world. We're going to say goodbye, world. We don't want your world. We want to stay far from your world. We're going to wear this world as a loose garment. We're not going to act like the world, dress like the world, talk like the world. The world is going to be able to see some light in us. We're going to walk in true holiness and righteousness and deny ourselves of ungodliness and worldly lust. I know we're living in a day and time when folk are talking about Christ, but they can't live Christ because they haven't been born again. Never seen so many preachers, cussing preachers and prophets and so-called children of God with these mean, nasty attitudes. No love. Always trying to fight you with the flesh. Can't hardly say anything to them about God. They fly off the handle and ready to fight you. They're not of God. They haven't been born again. They don't have the love of God. Glory be to God. They can't take anything. People supposed to lie on you and talk about you. That's the devil's job. He's supposed to lie on you, talk about you, mistreat you. But it is not supposed to be, it's not supposed to be folk who, who are professing salvation doing that. But we know it is because these folks are hypocrites. You can't be a hypocrite unless you go to church. The church is full of hypocrites. That's why the devil is always there, because hypocrites are always there. You leave one church and go to another church, there's a bigger devil sitting there waiting for you at the next church. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. All right? So we're in Romans chapter 6, and we went to verse 5. All right? Now let's, um, let's go to... Um, I'll tell you what, we're going to stop right there and we're going to come back. We're going to pick up as we slowly make our way to the measure of the Spirit. See, that's what we want. That's our destination to get you to the measure of the Spirit, to prove to you that we have a measure of the Spirit. All right? Glory to God. Hallelujah. We have a down payment measure. Glory be to God. And that's what we're working our way to. All right, now we're going to stop right here. We're going to come back on tomorrow as the Lord blesses, or today as the Lord blesses, and we're going to pick up. And we want you to continue to join in with us, and uh, we want you to uh, subscribe, like, and share. Share this with your, your neighbor. Share this with your family member. All right? You have somebody that uh, you're interested in getting saved, and somebody want to know the steps in salvation and whatnot and understand uh, the word of God, you want you need to share this. Glory be to God, hallelujah. Because God is going to do some uh, wonderful things in this ministry this year. Glory be to God. We're looking for greater things. We're looking to go higher heights and deeper depths in the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, my brothers, sisters, and friends, we'll see you on the next video. God bless. Bye-bye.